Hello, everybody. Welcome to my show with no name. Today we're looking at The Sword. And they're an American heavy metal band from Austin, Texas, beginning in 2003. My vocal guitarist John Cronice, guitarist Kyle Shutt, bassist Brian Ritchie, and drummer Santiago Vila III. Another stoner doom band from Austin, the present alt music capital, home to hundreds of bands and a vibrant nightlife. J.D. Cronus was writing and recording informally, and he formed The Sword in 2003 to play out. He was pleased when he found that he could copyright The Sword as a name for the band. I guess he thought it was probably already taken. They began as a trio, and they played at clubs like The Beerland in Austin. Age of Winters was a collection of demos and bassist Richie made the sword a four-piece. Next came an EP titled Freya, and they would sign with a New York-based Rimado Records and re-recorded a new version of Age of Winters. And here are the songs. One, Celestial Crown. It's instrumental. Two lead guitars, two rhythm guitars, or maybe it's one rhythm guitar and a lead guitar acting as though it were a rhythm guitar and vice versa. I don't know. The guitars are good. Two, a rail of blade. Just honest heavy rock without a great vocalist. Three, Freya. I love the black and gray sunburst Les Paul. Oh, and it sounds great, I guess. That's what I wrote. Four, Winter's Wolves jamming in a show storm. Not a show storm, a snowstorm. I guess they had a snowstorm going on and said go take your instruments out in the snow and play some heavy metal for us. It's intrepid. Five, the Horn Goddess. Always great guitars. That's about it. Six, Iron Swan. Very pleasant. It's an acoustic intro and then run of the mill thrash from then on. Seven, Lament of the Oryx, I think that's a bird. Eight, March of the Lore, that's another instrumental. And then nine, Bethlehem, Wild Guitars, Take Charge, Good Vocals, for thank you. The Sword is not the heaviest band so far, but they are medium metal. They tour with Clutch, Lacuna Coil, Trivium, Nebula, and Lamb of God. The Age of Winter did not chart, but reviews were positive. Their second album, God of the Earth, did chart to number 102 US. They toured with Machine Head and Metallica. The third album was a sci-fi concept album. It was titled Warp Riders and it released, it was released in 2010. It was more hard rock, less doom metal. The narrative is roughly about a planet that is tidally locked, that is always day on the same side and always night on the other. The band's website gives a full treatment to the story. It was a risk to not do another album with 
themes and sounds from the first release, they knew they were, they knew they might alienate some of their fan base, but they didn't want to be that band that does the same album over and over. Critics generally liked the album with its new direction, and more importantly, it went to number 42 U.S. Here's the song one, Acheron slash Unearthing the Orb. Sounds like space rock, probably because that's what it is, to Trey Bruja. Can you be justified metal without a logo that is symmetrical? Three, arrows in the dark, fluid, dynamic, uneven, and unconvincing. Four, the chronomancer, one hubris, rock, they are a rock band now. Five, lawless lands, metal fans will tell you you can't be both a metal band and a rock band. Six, as stray as dreams, too many noodles. Seven, the Warp Riders. It's not stupid, but it's not smart. Eight, Night City, a place where losers win. Nine, the Chronomancer. Two, Nemesis. The intro. It's a very long intro. Whenever that happens, you say, whoop, this is an instrumental song. But then the voice comes in at the end. Oh well, full East Coast beat, sorry. 10, the night the sky cried, tears of fire. Yikes. Album number four did even better. It's called Apocryphon, and it went to number 17 in the US. And that's damn good. It was not a concept album, but neither was it a return to pure metal. High Country in 15, and a world tour followed. Low Country was an acoustic version of the same songs, you know, just cause it's a thing now. Used Future in 18, this album only went to number 104 US, but Primus has announced a tour tribute for Rush featuring Sword, Wolf Mother, and Battles for 2020, you know, when the venues open up again. If they're gonna, I hope they do. But yeah, Sword hopes so too. I'd go to that show, by the way, wouldn't you? Sword has been on hiatus since late in 2018. A rest. They need a rest. Other albums are Apocryphon, The Veil of Isis, Good Times, End of All Things, The Dead Shall Rise, only Ghost will remain. Some dinosaur, maybe. Queen of Heaven. Two. The Cloak of Feathers. A mare of white. Quite a sight. So, a white horse, in other words. Vocals. Remind me of Bob Welsh, R.I.P. somehow. 
three arcane montage of time capsule for the hidden masters. This Illuminati? Just kidding. Five, Dying Earth. Cudgel? <laughs> you like Jack Vance? I sure do. Six, Excreter, Destroyer of Icons. Seven, Seven, Sisters, like Vassar, etc. Eight, Hawks and Serpents. Mexican flag, so there's that. Nine, Eyes of the Storm Witch. Got mommy issues. Ten, the title track. Eleven, Cheap Sunglasses, a ZZ Top cover. What's that doing here? The sword does it well. But this is kind of a tag on. Of a pair of cheap sunglasses to solve all your problems. I don't know if it's going to solve our coronavirus problem. It might. You can try it. I have. Just kind of block out the world for a little while until it gets healthy again. If it gets healthy again. 